Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here as a first-time attendee um, to represent Ingredium, uh, to introduce you some of our novel uh, functional dietary fiber product. So the presentation Maria and I are going to talk about today is in vitro digestibility and the physiological effects of uh, resistant starch type 4. So Ingredium has recently launched four different resistant starch type 4 RS4 dietary fiber ingredients with process tolerance and uh, versatile food applications. And uh, uh, in this presentation, we're going to talk about their in vitro digestibility profiles together with some of the clinical effects and food applications of these ingredients. And through this presentation, we will try to uh, convey that these RS4 ingredients can provide a practical means to increase the dietary fiber in food that ordinarily contains a low di uh, dietary fiber, thus helping close the fiber gap. So, uh, it is widely known that resistant starch can be divided into different types, and RS1 is usually known as physically inaccessible resistant starch, such as that can be found, uh, can be found in partially milled grains, uh, legumes, and unprocessed whole grains. And RS2 is a resistant starch that can occur in natural granular form, such as uncooked potato, green banana, and uh, uh, high amylose corn starch. R3 is a, a, star, a resistant starch that is formed when starch containing food are cooked and the quotes such as in legumes, bread, cornflakes, and cooked and chilled potatoes or retrograded high amylose corn. R4, which is the main topic of this presentation, is starches that have been chemically modified to resist digestion. And this type of uh, resist starch can have a variety of uh, chemical structures and uh, are considered uh, is uh, considered to be synthetic and cannot be found in nature. And more recently, there is another uh, fifth type of uh, resistant starch being proposed, which is now also known as uh, amylose lipid uh, complex. So here gives you uh, the background of our um, RS4 uh, ingredients. Verse five. 1490 is a modified potato-based resistant starch that contains dietary fiber. Verse 5 2470 and verse 5 2480 are both uh, modified high amylose corn resistant starch that contains dietary fiber. Nolos 3490 is a modified tapioca-based resistant starch that contains dietary fiber. So all these four ingredients, they have uh, distinctive chemical properties and structures, and they can be widely used in the food applications, such as cookies, crackers, extruded uh, snacks, bakery products, um, bread, pasta, and noodles. So first, we used our um, modified English method to assess their digestibility profiles. Um, so we started with the enzymatic digestion uh, process with incubation of pepsin under simulated gastric uh, condition for 30 minutes, followed by um, the simulated intestinal condition uh, with incubation of a mixture of enzyme cocktail containing um, pancreatin, inglutase, amyloglucosidase for four hours. And during the digestion process, we um, did the dental separation uh, at 20 minutes, two hours, and four hours. We use alcohol precipitation and centrifuge and then quantify the percentage of glucose released to indicate the um, digestible fractions and the resistant starch. So here gives you the um, digestibility profiles of these four RS4 ingredients. So you can see from the chart plotted by the percentage of glucose released over four hour digestion curve, uh, and all these four ingredients exhibit very low digestibility profiles and thus has very high RS content. With the verse 5 uh, 1490 being uh, least digestible, followed by verse 5 2480 and Novolo 3490, and then no, uh, five, um, verse 5 2470. And then we, were also look, we also looked at the total dietary fiber TDF value for these four ingredients. So we used uh, the conventional 
TDF method AOAC 985 and 991 method, which is also known as uh, Prosky method or Lee method. Um, but this method is, uh, um, cannot measure all the currently defined uh, dietary fiber components as defined by Codex. And more recently, there is another integrated fiber method called 2009 or 2011 method, also known as McCleary method, uh, which can include all the dietary fiber components uh, under the codex definition. So we used appropriate AOAC method um, to determine the TDF value of our four ingredients um, according to the um, regional regulations on fibers. So here gives you the TDF values of these four R4 ingredients um, as they are determined by appropriate AOAC method in context with the RS content determined by the English method. Uh, you can see that these four ingredients all has high TDF values and uh, high RS contents. And the RS content are correlated with the uh, TDF value and for verse 5, 1490, we have 90% uh, um, of uh, TDF as determined by both 991 method and 2009 method. And its RS content is 97. And uh, verse 5, 2480 and Novolo 3490, they also have very high TDF as uh, 85 and 90%. And they have a very similar RS content as uh, 87. Last but not least, uh, the verse 5 2470 has a TDF value of 70% as determined by 2009 method, and its RS content by, uh, determined by English is 81. So the key message here is that all these four RS4 ingredients, they have very high TDF and uh, also high in RS as indicated by analytical method and to prove that they are, uh, they are fiber. So, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Maria Stewart to continue the talk of uh, physiological effects and applications of our RS4 ingredients. So I'd like to share some of our clinical trials on the resistant starch type 4 ingredients. Our Versified 1490 resistant starch has been noted to reduce blood glucose levels when consumed in a cookie, and that's as compared to a conventional cookie made with refined wheat flour. So in a postprandial study looking at uh, blood glucose and insulin values over two hours after consumption, the Versified 1490 cookie significantly reduced the glucose area under the curve, as well as peak glucose concentrations compared to the control cookie. And this was also um, noted with the reduction in insulin area under the curve and peak insulin concentration. Versified 1490 resistant starch is also well tolerated, and resistant starches generally have been known to be well tolerated forms of fiber, but as we explore the RS4 uh, line of resistant starches, it is important to characterize the gastrointestinal symptoms. So in a previously published randomized double-blind crossover study by Dahl and others, a group of 20 subjects consumed 30 grams of fiber from Versified 1490 or an unspecified control in a fruit-flavored beverage, and the control was a digestible uh, starch. This uh, led to minimal effect on stool frequency, stool consistency, and gastrointestinal symptoms. So on the right panel, we have a bar graph showing the different symptoms that were assessed, such as bloating, flatulence, abdominal noises, and cramping. And none of the values that the subjects ranked were significantly different between the Versified 1490 treatment or the control. And moving on to Versified 2470, which is the maize-based RS4, in a postprandial blood glucose trial, we showed similar findings uh, com as compared to the Versified 1490 trial. When this fiber was incorporated into a muffin top, uh, it significantly reduced postprandial blood glucose and insulin responses over two hours. That was compared to a control muffin top with digestible refined wheat flour. So we saw significant reductions in glucose area under the curve as well as peak glucose concentration and also a significant reduction in insulin area under the curve when the fiber was included as a replacement for the refined wheat flour. 
Verse 5, 24, 70 is also fairly well tolerated. In a study that was um, recently presented at Experimental Biology, we showed that 25 grams of Verse 5, 24, 70 resistant starch was well tolerated with very minimal symptoms. Those gastrointestinal symptoms did increase at a 50 gram dose, but they were still mild. So the bar graph on the right shows a composite GI symptom score, and this was a composite score of symptoms including bloating, flatulence, abdominal pain, diarrhea, GI rumbling, and nausea. And these were rated on a scale of zero to three each. And so the maximum composite score that could be um, scored is a total of 18. You'll notice that none of the symptom scores exceeded five um, for the mean symptoms composite score. So these are still very mild scores given that they could have um, reached a composite score of 18. Um, we have concluded that this is a fermentable fiber based on some of the perceived gas production, and we are working on some in vitro trials to confirm this. There is no effect on fecal bulking or laxation at either of the doses, 25 grams of fiber or 50 grams of fiber. So Versafibe uh, resistant starches are an interesting form of dietary fiber in that they can be added into many food applications to enhance fiber content without changing sensory properties. And so they are, a, you know, from a food manufacturer's perspective, a low cost opportunity um, that can still provide a very high quality product with high consumer acceptability, but then provide that added fiber benefit. These are more process tolerant forms of resistant starch. Some of the resistant starches on the market can only be used in certain applications. For example, they may not hold up in extrusion um, conditions. The resistant starch type 4s that I've shown here do have good um, uh, uh, hold up in the extrusion process. And so just to give you some examples of the different products that could include resistant starch type 4, it ranges from baked goods to snacks to breakfast cereal to nutritional bars or pastas and noodles. And we also find that addition of these ingredients may actually improve texture over inclusion of the conventional refined wheat flour. So just as some visual examples of how these resistant starches can be incorporated into foods with still very um, appealing sensory attributes, here's a comparison of Versafib 1490 and Versafib 2470 in bread. And you can see that the, the bread volume and the uh, the size of the um, gas bubbles and the texture is very similar across all three of the uh, different breads shown on the right. We also noted that there were no significant differences in sensory attributes when a panel evaluated these three breads. And then when we look at extruded um, uh, products such as a breakfast cereal, we see that we have still good extrusion and expansion vol and volume with the addition of the fiber. So in the center panel, we have resistant starch uh, Versafib 2470 and Versafib 1490 on the right compared to the control on the left. So in summary, Versafib 1490, which is the modified potato starch, Versafib 2470 and 2480, which are modified maize uh, high amylose corn starches, and Novelos 3490, which is a modified tapioca starch, all exhibited low digestibility profiles and high resistant starch content. And this is reflecting in the total dietary fiber value for each of the ingredients as determined with the appropriate AOAC methods uh, for fiber analysis. Looking at the clinical data, when substituted for digestible starch, Versafib resistant starches can de decrease postprandial blood glucose and insulin, and these have high gastrointestinal tolerability. So this is a solution for fiber fortification uh, that can be used in a variety of food applications. So I'd like to thank you very much and take questions. Any questions? And Samsung with AEM looks like the products work good. My question is, is your product officially approved can be called as fiber? Is it related with the, the food industry labeling? If not officially approved, you say, okay, this is fiber, the food industry cannot put the ingredient in their so, this is the kind of complicating thing in between. Yeah. 
All right, thank you for the question. Um, so as we talked about yesterday, the FDA um, guidance, draft guidance on fiber uh, approvals is still in process and the fiber candidate list is still under review at the FDA. So based on analytical methods, which is right now the current standard for fiber labeling in the United States, these would label as fiber. Right, so the FDA um, has documentation from us for approvals of these ingredients, but right now there is no, you know, pre-approval in place because that, you know, compliance deadline is being extended. So right now, because we're using just analytical methods um, for labeling, it is approved as fiber. Once the compliance date comes around, whenever that is, after July 2018, then, you know, we'll have to comply with everyone else's um, regulations. Yep. <coughs> Sorry, O'Keefe, let's go. Um, very interesting uh, developments. Um, the, the question that I have is, is to get in uh, significant quantities of resistant starch. It always sounds nice putting it in bread and muffins and so on and so forth, but how many slices of bread would you have to eat, for instance, to get 30 grams of resistant starch in the model that you had there? So the model that I showed in the slide deck had two grams of fiber per slice of bread, so they would have to eat a lot of bread. But in our clinical trials, we did have products that contained upwards of 20 grams of fiber in the baked good. Um, so the uh, cookies had 24 grams of fiber um, in the uh, portion that the subjects consumed. So it is very possible. And it tasted good? The, the cookies, the control versus high fiber, were sensorily the same according to the subjects. Thank you. So we'll move on to our next speaker.